Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another draft here on Big Nerf Gaming. And, uh, surprise, surprise! It's Hour of Devastation. Uh, I got a little tilted by Ixalan yesterday, and I don't actually technically agree with all the things I said about the format being terrible. But I couldn't play it again today. It just, I couldn't keep doing it. So, hey, even if you don't watch this, I'll at least be happier, and uh, you'll get some better content tomorrow when we go back to Excellent. Also, might do a little extra bit of content today, something very different for the channel, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Anyway, for now, oh, I love this format. Uh, I, I am highly in... I think I'm going to pick Ambuscade here. Uh, our relation is too expensive. Uh, Cursed Horde isn't, the Zombies isn't good, Shadow's Feet, whatever, Random Map Ruined is good, but I'm not as good as the Ambuscade, and the Ambuscade is probably the best common in the format. Maybe, uh, what's it called? Ritualist. But I think it's Ambuscade. Oh, we take a Hope Tender? Take a Vizier of the Anointed? The powerful card, powerful effect. Ugh, interesting. I'm gonna take the hope tender for now. Uh Yeah, I think I'm just gonna take the hope tender for now. I think Vizier is good, maybe even better, but I definitely would rather be the base green splash a bunch of stuff deck in this format. I'm gonna lean that way and and I'm gonna go for it basically every time. Uh, ambuscade again. Uh, definitely gonna snatch this here. You could debate uh, the desert really as the other option, which and I wouldn't be mad about at you if you take the desert. Either one of the deserts. In fact, if you want to go in on Deadlands, I couldn't. I wouldn't be too mad. But I think I'm gonna take an ambuscade card is, whew, it is not a fight, it's an ambush. Your, your creature just gets to smack somebody real good. Oh, desert. I think we'll just slam that here. Hippo's fine, mana list's fine. Uh, Eternal of Hearts Truths, it's fine, but we would much rather just take the desert. Uh, I'm very intrigued on just taking another desert here. Uh, Jeru does not blow me away. Reed Stalker not great. Gift Straight not great. Andalid's fine, but whatever. Okay, I mean... I don't mind being the guy with all the deserts. Uh, I think Devotee of Strength is fine, but I think... Like, it's... It, it's a card that looks better. And it actually plays. Um... That effect is a little expensive, and this format is still a little vulnerable anyway. I think I'm just going to take the desert. I mean, more deserts. Yeah, okay. Uh, here we get an interesting spot because we can't really keep taking deserts and uh, we can't keep taking green cards, really. Harrier Naga is okay. I mean, I guess okay is fine. I'm not going to go into the blue on a cunning survivor. I don't think saving grace is very good. I mean, you could, there's arguments to be from, ma made for Manolith, but I haven't seen a Ritualist. I don't know if it's going to be able to be 5 healthy green. It might just have to be a... Or traditional green deck. With these deserts, though, we should have a pretty strong uh, chance later game. They're a very, very powerful effect in this format. If you haven't played it, you want deserts. You want to cycle. You do not want to be hanging out and waiting for other things to happen. Ah. Uh, I like. I don't think Wretched Camel is great, but we do have a desert. Green black is not a bad spot in this format. 
I don't love a cursed horde. Though, I mean, maybe that's even better. Maybe that has come all the way around. No, let's take the Naga. We took the Naga. Ah. Uh, Sandwalla was one that it seemed like you were going to need to play based on the last format, but it's not really the best card uh, in Hour of Dev. Meh. Uh, I mean, I guess we're not really too likely to... I mean, who knows where we're going to end up. I will take another Survivors here, or a Survivor here. Sure. Still not sold on black based on those two cards, but. Oops, sorry. That was way louder than I wanted it to be. Just put a pen down. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Much more reasonable volume of placing a pen down. Uh, so, pretty decent first pack. We got a lot of deserts. Uh, ambuscades are good. Uh, so we might be red-green instead of black-green. Ah! We can't just take Torment of Venom. It's interesting. Uh, huh. We also take Leaf the chance to go super deep. Try to hit me with a single, the single shot Grizzly Survivors. Hey, uh. Uh, but I don't think we're gonna do that. Uh. I think we're just gonna take Torment. Um. I think struggle is good, but torment is uh, I works very similarly. It, even though it's just like the minus three minus three counters generally make it so you can you can either make the creature fairly ineffective or kill it in some sort of combat. Um, and yes, struggle to survive is basically the god killer or killer, quote unquote. But oh, uncage. Another struggle. That's pretty rough. I mean, I do like Encage. I think it is better than it looks. But I think it's, it's probably correct just to take struggle here, right? I think we just take struggle to survive. I'm not sure if we come around to play it, but if we do find a way, I think it's going to work out better than the uh, the uncaged would for us. I think we should take the stalwart here. Um, we do need to add some amount of creatures to our deck, just not deserts. Um, and I think Star Wars fine. It's not as good as it uh, as you want it to be, really, but it's pretty good. Um. Oh, Torment of Venom. We'll snatch one of one of those up. We could also take a wall, though. The wall's very good, but I think we'll take Torment first, and we'll look at a wall in the future. Oh, speaking of walls, uh, I don't love Lethal Sting. Uh, especially if I've already got two torments here, I'm not like trying to end two ambuscades. I'm not super desperate to play that. I think wall is just gonna be fine. This card ends up being good in any any type of deck, aggro, control, whatever. It's just ping, 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 and hold on to my life total. Uh hmm. I don't think overcome is very good in the format. And it's definitely not good enough that I'm going to take it over the Rodus' stalwart here. Huh. Heh heh. I don't love Feral Prowler. Uh, this deck wants to turn sideways a little more than that. It's not quite the, like, five color, you know, hangout uh, deck. I don't really want to like, all in on Grizzly Survivors. I think I'm just going to take a Rot Beast here. When the 4-2 is fine, it's fine. And when it cycles, it cycles. Uh, there's a Mana List, but there's also a Liliana's Defeat. And I think we're just going to take that. Uh, super powerful sideboard card. 
Also, I, ha- I haven't done it yet myself, but I'm sure somebody in the format has won off the Lose 3 Life cards, and to them I applaud. <laughs> the Lose 3 Life clause, and I applaud their efforts. Ah, oh, Lose the Chance is fun, but we're not anywhere near the colors for it. Um, basically, what you can do is go all in on a single attack. If you have something like a Grizzly Survivor or the um, the blue guy that when you cycle or discard, it gains uh, unblockable and whatnot. And so you can basically leave to return all of, uh, tap all your mana, leave to return all of your permanents to your hand, including your lands, and then uh, chant, just discard everything in your hand for that one swing. <laughs> Only recommended if your opponent is completely tapped out. <laughs> I guess we'll take a scrounger here. Sure. I don't know if we play two of them. Ugh. I think I just want the gift of strength over another grizzly survivor. Definitely could have taken that uh, full arm out over this Grayman Abomination. Ironically, the statues have been constructed as a warning. Well, we'll snap that. Uh, yeah. The next best card effect is probably Cartouche, but... Hydro, shh, pretty okay. Uh, pretty... Pretty, pretty good. Ooh. Ooh, this is an interesting pack. Uh, we've got a final award. Your, your deck kind of wants a final award because exiling is important. We've also got a hoodie B. Hoodie B is very good. We also have a ruthless sniper, and we quietly have quite a bit of cycling, right? Four deserts, two without weakness, one lurching rock beast. It might not be... Time to take it here, but maybe on the way around. Uh, I don't think I need to take Splendid Agony. It's not... Uh, in Triple Amicet, you had to take Splendid Agony here because it was the way you did not die. It was basically the Ixalan thing. Like, well, how can I not die super fast? Oh, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to take Hoodie Bee. I got two uh, Torments. I got a couple other good, good interactions with Ambuscade as well. I think I... I uh, I need to get just increase the creature quality at this moment. Uh huh. Wow, this pack is boots. I don't think we really want to talk about this, do we? It's okay. But I don't think so. We're not, like, lamping into a whole bunch of stuff. I think we just want the Pouncing Cheetah. I don't even like this card that much, but... I do think it's better than, uh... Than the rep it gets. Uh... Say so yeah, I'm trying to snag that. Like, um, creatures with Flash, they don't actually have haste. But you can kind of give them haste. You can get the creature down in a situation where your opponent does not realize... And just crack them. Um, Cloth of Speed is good, but Sync Strike is very good. So we're going to take that here. Uh, man, do I, do I want Watchful Not going to be better than it is? I think we just take the Mummy. Ooh, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Three cartouches? <laughs> I guess we take a Strength. I think that's better for us than Ambition. We don't have a lot of uh, good things to stick an Ambition on anyway. Ooh, we'll definitely slam the horror here. Uh, I don't mind a Blighted Bat. Now tell me that Sniper came around. Give me that Sniper. Give me that Sniper. Show me Sniper. Or any of the cards, really. There had to be a card in our colors that comes around in that pack. I guess it's two picks right now. It's not this, this current pick. It's this next pick after. Uh, well. I think I'm about. 
<clears throat> and those do. Immediately after I was like, well, we'll take the cartoon of strength because we don't have a, anything that wears the cartoon ship ambition that well. We. Wow, really? None of those cards came around? I guess we'll sideboard the stinging shot here. Heck, I mean, uh, I don't think we have to pay a decade. We have enough uh, ways to deal with opponent's creatures. I don't think we need to place such a restrictive uh, removal spell. Well, this is a blank pack. So I'm just going to try to not get open into Wondered. Uh, yeah, they're not getting... I mean, none of those cards really affect my deck much. I mean, these are in pod, so... Uh, it is much more important just to... Not much more, but it is far more relevant than it is in League to uh, make sure you take away good cards from your opponent's late packs. It's not, it's not like we're in League, so you're like, well, I'll take this uh, full art land with three cards left in the pack because none of them are in my color and I want to kind of send people into those colors. Can I play six cents in this deck? Probably not, right? That's being greedy. Okay, first off, struggle comes out. We don't need to splash for uh, removal. Let's cook the creature separately. Four lands means we only got to cut uh, five things, even though main deck is pretty full. Um, I'm definitely out on double without weakness, if, especially because I didn't get the um, the cycling payoff in the sniper. But I don't know if I need any without weaknesses. And if I'm cutting uh, cycling cards, I kind of want to just cut the at least one of these survivors. I think I want all these two drops. I mean, I have a couple of cyclers, but not enough to really trigger survivors, right? I think we're cutting both. And then, huh. We got enough deserts that we should definitely be playing 17 with these deserts, because it's if, if we flood into deserts, we can cycle them away. I think we just pull out a scrounger? Yeah, I think that's fine. Seven, six? No, I think that's wrong. I think they're not accounting for my deserts. Nine, eight. Feels better to me. Okay, um, so it's, uh, I'm going to have to cut away here because I'm not going to make, make you sit here for eight minutes. So uh, we'll be back in just a moment with uh, the first round action. Welcome back to round one here. We're going to have the mulligan in this hand, obviously. We've got one land and no real uh, things we can cast with it. <sighs> We're going to mulligan again. At least our opponent is also mulliganing. Hey, this is fine. We'll keep this hand. Opponent kept their four lander. We'll bottom that because we have no chance of playing it anytime soon. Oh. Um, that's not great. We definitely prefer a lot of other cards. It's our opponent is going to have a slow draw, so with the four card hand, you are a, at least a not very long term effective draw. Hey, that's good. Uh, we're going to play Wretched Camel, and we are wholly willing to block here. If I had a... Like, let's say I had drawn a, a desert there, I may hold off the block for a turn, because getting opponent to have to discard would be super strong when they're only at two cards in hand. Okay. Opponent just, uh, <laughs> okay. Opponent Mulligan's down in his three-color deck against the Neheb right now. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, we're just going to play that. And the wall. And 
And then if uh, if opponent leaves a card in hand next turn, I think we're just going to use uh, Cartouche Strength on the Camel and kill Neheb. Oh, no. His hand's going to be empty. Opponent's hand is going to be empty. <laughs> okay. Wow. Opponent goes down to four cards in hand, gets all of his colors for his deck that's playing Bitterblade, Warrior, and Neheb. <laughs> I guess we didn't go far. <laughs> Man, if you just when you're just not having any luck, you're just not having any luck, huh? Guess we discard the forest. Ugh. He mulliganed to four and then had the heb on three. <laughs> oh, we cannot catch a break, can we? It's throwing away cards, but we have to just cartouche your strength of blighted bat to kill in the head. It's <laughs> unless something else comes up into our hand this turn. Oh. What? Okay. Got nothing untapped. There's no good way of blocking that. Whatever. I don't like it, but um, we have to. He's just gonna keep like he'll like I can't stop that from hitting me every turn, and he's gonna keep just pulling my land out of my hand. And this is much better for us. We we take two this turn, like taking two. We're actually taking one a turn from what he has on the battlefield. Two every other from the exerted uh, warrior for now. Oh, it has a. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> like, what has happened? Where do 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 I just am I not lucky? Is that what's happening? Am I just is that like Yeah, you pump that, that's fine. <laughs> we can't catch a break, man. I don't um Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, it's, it's, this is. <laughs> Man. Okay, well, we might be able to pick off a free Bitterblade Warrior here. Oh, no, he exerted it last turn. Why did he exert it? And now he's got a Dream Stealer? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense for our opponent to exert last turn. He exerted. Ah... Uh. We have to kill the Dream Stealer first, right? 
because otherwise we lose our other removal spell. So we do lose our other removal spell anyway um, if we block with the Pouncing Tita because it can't block. So I have to use Ambuscade first. Not excited about it, but... Ugh, and that means I can't kill it when it comes back, because Torment of Venom doesn't kill it. <laughs> and he's got another creature! Oh my... <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> wow. We are getting destroyed by just straight three-color greed. This card and this card do not belong in the same deck. If you're playing both in the same deck, you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry, but, like, I don't care if we lose. It's not correct. Uh, I guess we cast this here. I think we're just dead. I don't think we have any way out of that Dream Stealer next turn. Just killing us. Yep, okay. Our opponent mulligan to five. <laughs> okay. Or four. Yes, we mulligan to five, but our opponent mulligan to four and hit turn three and a half after turn two. Bitterblade Warrior. Liliana's defeat without weakness. Both think they're I think both will be good here. Uh Lighted Bat did not feel good. And I'm bringing in the Without Weakness kind of for the Gift of Strength here because uh, the Without Weakness is going to be his... He didn't seem to have a lot of big creatures. He had creatures that punished me for blocking. I don't think we can keep this, can we? Come on! Can we just just get a little bit, a little bit of help from the from the draws here? <laughs> Man, <laughs> it's fine. Not a big deal. Just opponent like opponent has apparently the heckbent de heckbent deck, but it's limited. But he's got multiple rares that benefit from uh, Hackbent, which is the uh, having one or fewer cards in your hand. It's not quite Hellbent, but you're Hackbent. Not my term. Uh, R&D came up with it. Don't ask me. All right, well, we will just flash and cheat at the end of the turn. Same time we smack him with the wall for a point. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, no three no no turn three play for him is big. Probably because they're playing six colors.
I think I just attack. No, I'm not gonna attack. I'm gonna play Harrier Naga. I'd rather play Harrier Naga to build my board than play either of these removal spells. Um and I don't really want to just throw the cheetah away at the Dread Wanderer. Because he can get the Dread Wanderer back. Oh my god, I didn't trigger the wall. I'm so bad. So bad! Uh... Play here definitely involves smacking that Wasteland Scorpion with Ambuscade. It's just, it's, I think I just smack it with Harrier Naga, right? And then bash with the Naga. I don't have to throw the cheetah away still. Um... I am not running scared of Dread Wanderer. I'm gonna put my mouse right here so I don't forget. The opponent should be at 14 right now, and if we're we miss this by one health, who we're not even gonna talk about that. Oh, look at that! Opponent just conceded because of their green tastic mana base. Man, I would love to just have a... Where Where is my spreading rot? Where is my demolish? I would love to just miser destroy one of their lands. I don't think we have that, though. We don't have any, any good way of doing that, unfortunately. Come on. Uh, yeah, okay. It's got two drop, it's got three drop, and it's got a cycle. Oh, I'm not rolling any back a seven card. Ugh. Ah. <laughs> uh, that is brutal. Nothing in this hand does anything about a sandwalla. An opponent's going to be happy to activate it every turn because their deck is not going to have a lot to do when they're stuck on green mana. God dang. Okay, whew. That's going to be a big, uh, a big difference here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Uh, let's see, opponent attacks first, yep, because you want your threat of activation. Huh? Oh wow, they they changed it to dot 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 and exert. <laughs> That's kind of cool. All right, I'm very confused again. I attacked and exerted because I was willing to trade for uh, my Ronus Stalwart for the first uh, Frilled Sandwalla, and I assumed opponent was going to pump it and block because. Opponent left up two mana? I'm really, I'm really not getting it. If opponent wants to spend all their mana this turn hitting me for six, that's fine. Our tormenting starts next turn.
Plus bouncing team, nice. We can torment this turn and then pouncing cheetah uh and cycle desert the next turn. We wait for him to activate. If he wants to hit us, if he only really hit us for two, that means he's gonna be playing something and we'll torment that. Um but we wait till after he activates. If he activates both. Nice. Lost the three life there, which is cool with us. If opponent attacks, do we block with Pouncing Cheetah, or do we wait? I mean, it's greedy to wait. But also, if we wait, and like, if he attacks with Sandwalla, doesn't play a second creature, we can uh, make the Pouncing Cheetah. Yeah, I think this is correct. Pump it! Pump it! Make my day! But it pumps it, we should win. Almost assuredly. Huh. Opponent still has to block next turn, so. We torment the devotee. And we attack with everything and exert. He's forced to chump with the Dream Stealer on the Pouncing Cheetah. Or he just loses. And then, so, and next turn they can't even activate uh, Eternalize on Dream Stealer. What? We're just going to lose? Okay, well, that works for us. Um... Yeah, we're we'll be happy to take that win. Um let's let's click return details to see if this other match is coming. Yeah, we still got we're one of the first games done. So uh, I'm gonna cut away right about now and I will see you all back here for round two. Hello everybody, welcome back to round two here of this hour of devastation draft. Uh we're gonna keep this hand because it is pretty solid. I think we play, with no uh, desert, I think we play the mummy on turn two. Ooh, or maybe we play the hope tender. I think we play the hope tender. Uh, playing the hope tender and waiting on the mummy, uh, in theory, sh because we're, we are, we've are we started playing our cards before our opponent. Um, they're more likely to have cards in hand after we've played out our hand, especially if they're stuck on two mana. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so I guess we'll get in there with the hope tender. Play a blighted bat. Pass the turn. Let's see what opponent does. Oh, opponent also on three color. What is this three color nonsense? Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe this guy's more five colors. We never saw a ritualist out of the last guy. Hey, he's got a man. Okay, I, I, I can, I can deal more with this, with this opponent. They are. Uh, it's like slightly more interested in uh 
their deck making sense. Uh, do I just discard wall? I think so, right? Without a, a desert, it's got uh, it's got no effect, especially on this board. I don't expect opponent to play something that I'm going to have this 0-4 be very effective against. I would much rather keep my two removal spells and my five drop, I think. It's less mana efficient, but I don't think that matters in this particular case. Uh, okay, we're cool with that. Okay. Opponent using their removal spells on our two drop and three drop is definitely something we're cool with because they're they don't really do anything. They are just two power creatures. Peace. We just cast Torment now. Um, so they either have to sacrifice their mana list, discard a card, or lose three life. And either one of them is probably, any of them is probably bad for opponent right now. Yep. Opponent chose to lose three life. Pretty interesting. Uh, they, they couldn't sacrifice the mana list, because if they sacrifice the mana list, then they need to top deck, they need island specifically in order to Play Sinuous Striker. Overwhelming Splendor, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, that's hype. Well, I think we just cartouche this and save our Ambuscade. Yes. Smash it with our mummy. Gonna ambuscade that and smash. Ambuscading before we attack, just in case. Opponent has something to screw us. Nice. And then we're playing Stalwart after combat. This opponent already had, like, I guess opponent could cast Hour of Revelation. Oh, oh, never mind. They're out of creature. Okay. That, by the way, is why we did that before we attacked. <laughs> Right, we have Cycler in hand, opponent's top decking. We have Creature in play already. I think opponent at five life, we're in a pretty good spot. Opponent cycles. We regularly attack because we can attack and exert next turn. I'm gonna cycle one of these now. Ooh. Let's just play that. So we can play the Hydra next turn if uh if it comes down to it. The Hydra is a nice resilient threat where if they even have to have some sort of removal spell, if we can bring it back, we're pretty set. That's fine. We just smash into that with the stalwart. Straight up. Quite efficiently. Two drop for six. 
though at this point it doesn't really matter. Then play the big old trampler. Good, that's good. Hey. Okay, let's let's take a look. Um hmm. Well we have no way of dealing with opponent's enchantments, which is pretty bad, considering opponent is rolling in enchantments. <laughs> Man. Walk away with no enchantment removal and then get that. Okay, um... I have to assume... Like, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't think we bring in the stinging shot on just the, uh... Seeing the one uh, winged shepherd, I think we hold off. Uh, I don't think Wicked Weakness is good because he's he's not killing my creatures. He thought they they're just uh, trapping them. Um, they do seem kind of desert focused. Maybe Grave and Abomination is not the worst. If like if we snipe the desert out of their graveyard if they've cycled it, like that could get us a long way. Uh, we'll take a look uh, if this goes to game three. Oh, we'll keep this hand again. Oh, got stalwart into blighted bat. We got stalwart into naga. We're going to exert this pass, no reason to trade it, and make a Naga. We would love to see uh, a real land for next turn, because then we can keep playing things uh, up the curve. Though I guess not seeing a land is not the worst. We can play the desert and still play the Blighted Bat and kind of get by. Opponent got Uncrushable Thirst. And the desert required to get it on the Naga. Nice. See what I say about that, uh, great with abomination. Hey, you. Oh! Hoodie B! We'd love to see a swamp next turn. Um, let's just, uh, get to both our five drop and, uh, cast Torment of Venom. Both going to be good. Opponent just gliding his way to his colors, no problem. Oh, Ambuscade! Uh, I would have played Blighted Bat beforehand, but I think we just, uh... Get in with our attacks, uh, because we have the Ambuscade. Alright, I guess we'll play a Rock Beast. Still not playing around our revelation. Just yep. I mean, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Opponent is one man away from splendor. That is, which is uh, a bit worrisome. I don't think we attack here. I think we just cast our... Yes, opponent can play Splendor next turn, and I'm not in a great spot, but... 
I honestly, I don't think I, I don't think I just lose to Splendor right now. I think I can get around that. Uh, <clears throat> Opponent with just, okay. Attack with everything. Like, we're in a spot where even if he blocks with Camel, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, that's fine. We'll make those trades if that's if you're going to let that happen. Uh, I'll play a Sidewinder Naga this turn. Hey, we got there. Opponent was trying to, like, it's the second opponent that's playing three colors in this format when it's not really a three color format. It's a two color format or it's a five color format. Like, <laughs> it's, this is not greedy enough. And I have yet, to, I didn't see either opponent cast a ritualist. If you're not playing ritualists, I don't think you should be playing that many colors. But the ritualist, it just, it cackles at half of this setup here. Why not? All right. I guess not really. But cackles at the Naga. You don't have to use it on that. Um, so you could save it for the Hoodie B or the something else. At least trade it. Trade, I don't know. Which list doesn't do them a lot here, per se. But I do think it's a fantastic card. And you need to have it if you're playing a second. That said... Uh, we still have a little match going on here, so I will see you everyone uh, shortly. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to round three. We will gladly go first here. Let's take a look at this hand. <laughs> no, we got a mulligan that. Uh, we'll keep that. That's playable. Totally playable. I think we uh, desert turn one. Unless the uh, scry reveals that we're gonna draw a card on, t uh, draw another land on turn two. Keep. Uh, well, that's another tap land. So we're just gonna bottom that and play the desert on turn one. Stalwart Naga Blighted Bat. That seems pretty good. Hold on, I'm adjusting my setup here. You should probably be able to hear me better now. Sorry, I had pulled down the keyboard between uh, matches. Another desert, Jesus. Um. We probably block there. Okay, well, don't have to. No need to exert. Man, is that is that dot 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 and exert just one of the sweetest little UI upgrades I ever did see? I have a minor uh, user interface obsession. Uh huh. Gotta be a cycle, right? Yeah, I'm about to say. There's no uh, two mana counter spell in the format, I don't believe, so. Man, no catcher's intended is good, by the way, huh? Another three color deck? Why is everybody being so greedy? I don't, all right, I mean, sure, that's fine. Pony can now cast finish, spending a life if they want. I don't think that's good. Get in for one with the warrior. I mean, they're just getting the one with the warrior either way. Is 
That's fine. We can we can play right over that. I think it's better just to do the attack and uh, make the wall and then sink strike next turn. I mean, he is tapped out there, which the opponent is tapped out there, which is not irrelevant, but I still think uh, better play. That does give him flying, which is kind of unfortunate, and lets him block. So, yep, that kind of beats us up uh, quite a bit. By sync strike and attack, he has to block the Ronus's stalwart with the steadfast sentinel. Right? Yeah, or he take yeah, that that's correct. You have to exert stalwart because otherwise they can chump it with warrior. Fine with us. Okay. I mean, unless opponent has life gain this turn, or they ca they have to cast finish on wall, and then s no, they can't cast finish on wall without finding a swamp. <laughs> hey, we got there. Cool. Is opponent two color? And they're just, they might just be two color. Okay, and they might be. Uh, I don't know though, if you're two colored, you don't splash off of just, like there's no reason at all to splash off just the, uh, the what's it called? You'd be better, like it, you, if you could splash off if near Deadlands, or you could just like find yourself a painted bluffs and splash off a swamp and a painted bluffs, and then you get the effect of having a swamp without having to ping yourself for one anytime you need a black I'm not, I don't know uh, opponent was white blue uh, we did see start to finish so we're going to pull without weakness in for the gift of strength because if we can uh, without weakness in response to start to finish it's a huge blowout because it costs the opponent multiple uh, cards uh, we'll keep this Oh, almost clicked Mulligan there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we could we could use a sw uh, swamp, uh, a desert. That'd be really good. Ew. Prowess afflict. The spell weaver eternal. No reason to block. I mean, I guess I could block, but I take the two no matter what. Uh, I kind of just want to play the Blighted Bat and offer the trade. I know I can um, effect it more effectively use my mana on a future turn, but that Dauntless Haven has Vigilance, essentially, and plus upside on that. Uh, definitely not blocking now. Because uh, it screams that he has a spell. And they have a spell because um, why would you attack with the Dauntless Haven? Yeah. 
Of course, the spell is farm to market. That's not the worst. Play Harrier Naga because it forces opponent to have a spell to trade. I mean, I guess they can mark it before combat, but that doesn't seem good. Well, let's see what you got, buddy. That's fine. Oh, we really need something to deal with that flyer, but we're doing all right. I think we just pass uh, with Cheetah because we can probably catch a free warrior. It makes infinite sense for opponent to attack with both to get in for the single damage. Okay, that's fine. Well, I mean, it's not bad. We would we would definitely prefer some like some way to kill that Dauntless Haven, but I mean Honored Hydra it just gets finished. Just a really good target for finish. But I mean, that's fine. We gotta make him use the finish. Oh, okay. All right, or we just lose. <laughs> Captain's last word is just huge blowouts there. An opponent has the sacred cat. Okay. Opponent had lots of uh, correct things against us there. Uh, I think we're going to bring in the stinging shot. Opponent is white blue. Uh, it's definitely likely to find some value. I kind of just want to pull the lot, the rot beast. It does not match up well against um, opponent's cards as a four two. Uh, opponent had a lot of two power things there. We'll keep that, I guess. It's not great, but it'll probably do. We're discarding a swamp here. It, it made it, yes, we can't cast Torment of Venom, but I'd rather have back to back Blighted Bats in a world where we don't draw any more lands. And if we do draw any more lands, well, we have access to Torment of Venom. Yes, opponent gets to embalm that back later, but I'm not trying to hang around at this moment against them. This desert again? Ew, I still don't like it. It's just the naked deadlands as a colorless land. Like, there's, the, 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 there's other better colorless deserts. I, I guess you could pay one life to finish, but... Ugh. It's, yeah.
Okay. Uh, we're going to smack that with an ambuscade next turn. Ideally, we draw a land. Yeah, okay, we're just going to torment it. Um, you can't sacrifice the Cartouche of Knowledge in response. I believe. Yeah, there you go. Oh, wait, no. They discarded Spellweaver Eternal. Well, that's incorrect. Uh, your card due to knowledge is another non-land permanent. You can sacrifice that in response because it is yet to hit the bin um, because the effect of the spell, we haven't hit the cleanup stage yet. Ah, well then. That's going to be pretty good. We could really use a land here so we could play Scoundrel Souls and just smack it with Ambuscade. Because otherwise I definitely see him overwhelming us with his card advantage. Even if it's just Sacred Cat, I mean. Uh, hmm. I think we just play this land to be able to play a Scrounger next turn. I don't think cycling it is very good. I think getting Scrounger out is very important to our plan for winning this game. Look, he's going to draw two cards here. And Ed have it a... What's it called? And have some lifelink. Yep. I mean, at this point, we don't even smack that Vizier because it's already drawn the cards. And I got to assume that Steadfast Animal there is his la is the opponent's last uh, embalmable card because they went and fetched the Sacred Cat last turn. Oh, Sync Strike. That could be very big in a turn or two. The opponent could spend turn making Sentinel, but I think we're fine with that. In fact, that's our preferred uh, way our opponent spends their turn. I don't think I block. Back to Sandblast here. No Sandblast. I'm just going to pass. Um, that screams that this is the opponent with the Revelation, right? Oh, the hard cast renewed face. Okay. I did not see that coming. I, I must say. Wait. Why wouldn't you just cycle renewed face and play hollow one last turn? Is sarcophagus? Is opponent about to play sarcophagus? That's okay. Oh, Forest is very good. Let's just make Hoodie B and leave up our tricks. There's a nigh zero percent chance we'll cast Sing Strike this turn. Unless opponent is uh, about to make us discard cards. That's about the only way. Because otherwise we can we're gonna cast it on the Blighted Bats for the win.
Oh, wait, no, he's going to gain one from the uh, Baker Cat. Oh, well. A little greedy, but... Yeah! Okay, we win this game. That's Hour of Revelation? There it is. You know, we saw that coming and played into it anyway. God dang it. Turn away from getting in there with the six strike too. Gosh. Ah. Man, why did we play the hoodie bee? We just were talking about Hour of Revelation. Play around it the whole draft right up until the opponent has it. This is that's that's what we're talking about right there. Do we sink strike to get this camel? I think so. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yep, we're going to lose this one, folks. Man, I can't believe I played in that hour of Revelation. Hard cast renewed faith just beat me. Oh man. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Not excess. Oh, my goodness. Well, all right. Well, we lost this one. Uh, I, you could definitely write this down as a punt because I gave this one away hard by playing into that hour revelation. Opponent kills us right now with Shafet Dunes. Are they taking so long? Sure, tap that instead, because you gotta be, you gotta be properly efficient right now when you're winning the game. Damn. All right. Well, GG. Uh, I still had more fun with this, uh, with this draft than I did in the other ones, and it is my fault I lost. I did not lose to the deck. I did not lose to not drawing anything. I lost because I'm an idiot. I lost because I did not play around an hour revelation. I knew that was in one of my opponent's decks somewhere. I knew it was out there. And the way the opponent was playing made it seem like they had it. And I did not play around it. So, but I can deal with that. Like, I can deal with that loss. It's not one of these terrible losses in uh, Ixalan. Shout out to this guy, who I'm pretty sure... Just real quick. Wait, can I show previous rounds? Person get the double... Uh. Oh no, they 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 won their game in round two. 
Wait, did they get the double buy? Lost round run and they won round two. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's all for today. Uh, I hope I hope anybody that's watching this had fun with the Hour of Dev Draft. It's a nice change of pace for the Exxon. Like I said, it felt much better to just kind of lose when it was my fault. A lot better. Just so much better. Uh, anyway, um, it would have felt better to win, of course. I'm kind of tilted about that, but I'm not going to be too tilted. Uh, anyway, um, I will catch everybody back here tomorrow with probably another excellent draft. I'm not going to torture everybody with hour of, multiple hour of devs a week. Uh, but until then, uh, you know, go uh, make sure you uh, uh, wash behind your ears. Uh, be sure to uh, get that solid eight hours every night, which I don't do, but, you know, I'm going to recommend it here. And, of course, have a great life, folks. Peace.